Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Daily Huddle. So um, there's a new movie out called um, Peter Pan and Wendy. And, you know, we, we love Peter Pan in my house. But I, I learned something about Captain Hook. I did not know this. Did you know where he got his hook, Tara? No clue, sister. At the secondhand store. <laughs> oh, no. I, like, I like that. I like that one. I like that. I like that. Thank you, Thank you Stan. I like that one too. I like that one. Like that one. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Daily Huddle. Thanks for joining us today. Today, we've got a fun topic for you. And the question is going to be, are you all grown up yet? I know, I sort of hope not, but let's see what Tara has to say about this. Before we get started, we're going to ask some questions. Stan, I would love to hear you tell us what time it is. Um, wow, half the time is now. That's right. That's absolutely right. The time is only right time now. The only time there is. The only time there is. Well, thank you for spending your now with us. And Chase, I would love to hear from you. Grand day. Grand day. Where are you and what are you grateful for? I am right here in the present moment, distracted by nothing, right here. I am grateful that my father of 74 years young made it through his surgery and is walking around today. Wow. That's what I'm grateful for. Mm, that's, that's a lot to be grateful for. Thanks, Chase. And let's see, Rashida, I'm gonna ask you, how are you and who are you gonna hug today? We can't hear you very well. Can you hear me? Now we can hear you. Okay. I am blessed and I'm not stressed and I'm going to hug my 70-year-old sister that I'm visiting in Brooklyn right now. Oh, oh wow. wonderful. And Ooh. she's upset because I just say her age. She's just mad because I just say her age. But she looks so awesome. Oh, that's look, wonderful. Look at, look at my 70-year-old 70, 70 sister. Look at her. Look at oh, her. my Whoa. gosh. Beautiful. And she's 70. Hey, yes, you. So go yes, yes, her. No way you're 70. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Thank you. Can you. Oh, that's that? wonderful. Love family coming on the Daily Huddle. Oh, this is exciting. Okay. Well, it's all teeing up for the right question, Tara. Are you all grown up yet? Tell us about this question. And how do we know if we're all grown up? Well, I will answer the question kind of the way that you did to kick us off. And that is, I absolutely hope not. <laughs> so let's, I'm going to dig into the question a little bit more. But what I'd like to do is, is level set just a little bit and remind us that Catherine and I have launched somewhat of a series around joy and specifically the six strategies of joy that we have discovered. And I want to, uh, to remind ourselves before we dig into one of those strategies, which happens to be growth, I want to remind ourselves the purpose of joy. And I want us to remember that joy is not only for you personally. As a matter of fact, joy is not even primarily for you. When we are able to manifest true, physical, biological, physiological joy in our bodies, we are our best selves for the people we care most about. So finding a way to make sure that we elevate joy within is a gift to everyone we come in contact with. And I want to rem us to remember that as we dig in today's, into today's strategy for joy. And that strategy definitely is growth. And I want to share a, a couple stories around growth, what it means, and how it can serve us and those that we love so much. And so by doing that, um, I want to take you back to one of the first times that I was able to learn about how growth could help my joy. And it was in traumatic time in my life, but things were starting to shift a little bit. I was feeling better. I had fallen in love 
and I had put down my almighty, all-powerful cigarettes. And in its place, I had found running. And I would go out oftentimes and run. And I would run with the new love of my life's dog. And that was fulfilling and joyful. But then I discovered something else. I went out to the botanical gardens in Athens. And through the botanical gardens, there's tons of roots and trails. It's very edgy and it goes up and down and around and it winds and it's in and out. And if you go out there and try to run through the botanical gardens, you can't think about much else than stepping over roots or you're going to be flat on your face. So it's not the mindless experience of running. It's different. It is learning to almost dance with nature. And I, every time I would go out there, that's how I embraced it. I would put in my little iPod. Remember the days, the little pin, the mini iPod. And I would start to run and I would have to jump and skip and leap over roots. And I had to pay attention. And that was one of the first times that I discovered what flow state is. I didn't know it at the time, but something was happening in my body because I was learning to do something new. I was learning to do something that I was capable of, but that was very challenging. And so I had to stay in the zone. I had to stay in that focus. I could stay out there and lose all track of time. And when I left the botanical gardens, if I had to go back and face Caroline's caregivers or seizures or my son's growing addiction, anything that was painful, I was in those moments, the very best version of myself to face whatever it is I had to face. What happens to us when we're learning to do something new is, as you probably already know, we're creating new neural pathways but we're also creating something else. We're creating something called anandamide. And that lands on our CB1 receptors, the same place where THC lands. That's called the bliss molecule. And that has the ability, especially stirred up with oxytocin to stay in our body and keep that joy state alive. And when we know that, we can be intentional about keeping it alive. We don't have to just have joy and then go back to the grind of life. And then, oh, maybe a moment of joy or pleasure and then back to the grind of life. We have the ability to take this intention and keep that joy alive in our bodies. So I wanna, I, I don't wanna dust over what I said about flow because it is a practice. We don't, we can't wait for it. We can be intentional about uncovering it. And if you're especially interested in learning more, there's actually, there's so much out there on flow state, um, but there's a, there's a Ted talk and it, it's a violinist. The woman's name is Diane Allen. And she explains how she goes into flow state with her violin. And as I listened to her, I, I uncovered something else about flow state, which I think is really powerful. Eventually I would go out to the botanical gardens and I knew the path and I knew the roots and I knew the trail so well that it wasn't as challenging as it used to be. And that's why we cannot be all grown up. We can never say we've got things all figured out. Once we do, we've got to embrace something new. That's what keeps our mind in that state, giving us the ability to be in flow. So I wanna reinforce it one more time. When we are in flow, we are highly challenged and highly skilled at the same time. So we're just a little bit out of our comfort zone, but we're capable. So we're learning, we're stretching, we're growing. And that keeps us in that very best state, which elevates those anandamides and brings joy to ourselves in such a way that we can share it with others and helps us to be the best person that we can be. So let's take a look at the, the opposite of flow or when one of those things are missing. Think about if you're highly skilled at something, but it's super easy. Then you get bored, right? Your mind wanders. You start thinking about other ways to bring yourself pleasure. Or think about if something's very challenging, but you're not skilled. That brings stress. Again, your mind wanders. You're frustrated. You want other, other ways to bring you pleasure. So I encourage us all, if, if we're not learning something new, go out there and find something new to learn. Find a way to be challenged and capable at the same time so that we can, this is only one of the six strategies of joy. Um, 
I want to hear what Catherine has to say about this, but before I do, I want to share one more example of how this can come alive in somebody's life. And um, I am a mom to three children, and I want to tell you just a little bit about my youngest child, Holly. She is and was the baby of the family. But um, when she was in elementary school, her my middle daughter, her big sister got sick and she watched her brain slowly, slowly deteriorate so that she lost her place as the baby in the family. She also watched her brother run from pain, find addiction, treat her terribly at times. This little young girl suffered so much as a young child, partly from neglect and partly from losing her place as the baby in the family and watching trauma. Then in high school, she developed an eating disorder. She worked so hard to get out of that. I remember when she went off to college, she was going to study abroad in Italy. She packed a scale. She was thick in an eating disorder for years and worked so, so, so hard to get out of it. And then she met somebody. She met the wrong person. And she went back into what was almost as bad as the eating disorder, which at times was suicidal. And she has worked so hard to come out of the pain of that relationship. And she's one of the many people, if you think about this, all her suffering was internal. She made good grades. She was an athlete. She went to college. She got an excellent, she got an excellent degree. But inside, my little girl was suffering. And she's been through so much and she's worked the right way to climb out of it. A lot of therapy, a lot of work on herself. And today I can tell you that she's turned that corner and she has discovered flow state. And it's been a big part of helping her to heal. So I'm going to share with you what her flow state is and hope that you'll enjoy it and remember to tap into yours. Call you when I need you, my heart's on fire You come to me wild and wild You come to me Give me everything I need Give me a lifetime of promises and a world of dreams you speak the language of love like you know what it means And I can't be wrong Take my heart and make it strong You're simply the best Better than all the rest Better than anyone Anyone I've ever met And I'm stuck on your heart I hope that will be a, a visual reminder to go out and find your flow state. It matters to you and it matters to all the people that you love. Oh, and Tara, that's so beautiful. It's so beautiful to watch her and in, in her element doing the thing. You can feel it kind of emanating off of her. Yeah, you can only imagine how many times I've watched that and I can't watch it to this day without crying. <laughs> Yeah, and it is such a good reminder to, like you said, to do the things that we love, to do something different. You know, she's not typing on a spreadsheet. Um, and yeah, I, I don't, I really don't have many words. It's just, it's a beautiful state. And it, and it's interesting because it's like, yeah, she just decided to go do pottery to learn something new and to dive into it. And she was totally present with it. You know, Are you, have you heard of Mel Robbins? Mm -hmm. She wrote the five second rule, or I think it's, yeah, the five second rule, and she totally changed her depression. Um, she talks about the power of a hobby. I mean, a hobby just sounds so almost like selfish and like, oh, it's just piddly. Mm -hmm. um, it has power if we find the right thing that makes yeah. us feel creative. And, and if naming it is important, it's more like a passion project. Mm -hmm. what she was yeah. doing she wasn't just doing a hobby you know just to do, 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 do tinkering I mean it's you know it was her passion in that 
Yeah. Well, and I know at the beginning, it was wildly frustrating I me. Mean, I didn't realize how hard it was. And some of the things she's created are insane. Tell us about your flow state and what it does for you. Yeah. I mean, mine is in projects. I love lately it's woodworking and get a lot of the same joy out of it of like, you know, cause I, I don't know much about it. So learning, but yet I am skilled at with my hands. And so I have that. It's not completely, although I did start to make a table and I got outside. It was too hard for me because I was doing a drawer mm -hmm. and I left it for like, I think over a month until I figured out a way to step back into it in a way that was easier. So it does show that like, once you get too far outside of your ability level, it isn't that fun. You know what I mean? That isn't flow state. So it's interesting, the balance of, you know, how do we get in there? But, um, yeah, for me, that just brings me joy. I love, you know, I have a few ingredients that, that make it real for me. And I don't know, I just, I love it. So I remember yeah. when I was at, when I was at your house, I just, this just dawned on me. Um, and I think it is, it's very telling about flow state and how different it is for each of us, because, um, you were covering a chair, mm -hmm. you got a chair for free, right. From the free Facebook site or something. Mm -hmm. And then not like Y'all, not like making a slip cover. No, like a real reupholstering this woman, this tiny woman, and she is a tiny human, reupholstering this giant chair, okay? It's heavy, it's bulky, it's awkward. She shows me what she's doing. And I can see where, I mean, she's taken every little stitch of that chair. And I, to me, the thought of doing that is God awful. <laughs> and I'm like, Catherine, it looks like really like physical hard work and exhausting. And she goes, yeah, I love it. <laughs> I remember that so clearly. I was like, ooh. <laughs> so we're all so different. For me, writing um, and absolutely uh, doing something creative and then obviously the connection piece. But right now, what I really want to focus on is the strategy of growth because sometimes we don't have the opportunity to be connected with others, to be in community. We have to find a way to elevate joy on our own so we can take it out and be our best selves. Um, and I do, I want this to be a conversation. I wanna hear about what puts you in that creative challenge space. So um, Chase, I know you have a flow state. <laughs> I do, I definitely do. Um, you know, I am blessed to have many vehicles that can encapsulate a flow state for me, but you know, I, when I'm singing, I, I'm watching a show. So let me explain that to you. When I'm singing, I am emitting energy and it's being bounced back to me and it keeps me in the flow. A couple of days ago, anyone who saw my Facebook post, I met Woody Harrelson. The reason why this is so interesting is because <laughs> I've always wanted to meet him. And I've always put the energy out. If you, my friends know that I meet everyone that I want to meet, it's true. So I was singing and I looked out of the corner of my eye and he was walking towards me and he stopped and he walked back and forth and he looked at me and then he sat down. And then when I was finished, I was like, hi, how are you? He was like, hey man, how are you? I said, good. He goes, you sing these songs so good. Wow. I had to stop and listen to you. I said, what a pleasure it is to meet you. What, what can I sing for you? And he asked me to sing on the street where you live. <clears throat> the reason why that was so interesting and I talk about it as my flow state is I manifested that in my mind. I saw it happening. I just didn't know where. And my flow state begins to move every day when I'm singing and I generate things and I keep my heart in a, in a, in a, in a place of, 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 uh, of lubrication and very fluid movement with that. I can sing alone. I can sing next to the piano. I can sing to people. That is one of my highest vibrations of flow state. And my father said that to me. He said, you know, obviously I've known you all your life and I've never ever seen you as happy and as fluid as when you're on the stage. Every time I've seen you on the ship, I've seen you on land, I've seen you in private, I've seen you in corporate events. The elevation that you get when you're doing that is so high you can't even see it yourself. And I'm like, wow, thanks for saying that to me. And I get that because I get the full range. I feel the people coming towards me from an aura perspective, not just, hey, Chase, you're great. Well, I don't mean that. I just mean like the, the vibe. You know what it is to do something? 
and someone sits there for an hour and just looks at you like they got a place to go they got some stuff going on why mm -hmm. are they there because there's a connection that happens and i'm so blessed to have that and to take that in in a way that is it's so magical i well, I, I mean it's coming from a higher place but i embrace yeah. it yeah. it's just amazing yeah. What a gift you have that you know exactly how to go, who to be, where to be, to tap into that. Um, I, I'll put, I'll, I think I could put what maybe you're you're expressing in another uh, way, and I'll, I'll I'll reference the TED talk that I mentioned. And this violinist, she talks about when she's on stage with her violin that she's sharing and she's uniting, and when she reminds herself of that, that helps her to to work to get in flow state. Like we don't sit back and wait for it. We seek it. We're intentional about it. She said one time her, her arms froze and it was when she was just thinking about the mechanical job of doing the violin. Then as toward the end of this career, she had to go out and network. I, I don't remember the details, but she had to go out and network and she hated it. She's like, oh, this is the opposite of flow. This is not it. And then she remembered that her flow state partly was about sharing and uniting. And it totally changed her perspective about networking, which I thought was fascinating. So I, I absolutely love hearing that you have that gift in your life. And oh, OK, y'all, P.S. Woody Harrelson. I hope I never meet him because you know what a hall pass is? Uh-uh. He's mine. <laughs> Wow, so, he's your hall pass. Wow, interesting. What a kind person. Very kind. We had we hugged each other. He shook my hand. He gave me a, a bundle of money. He just threw it. He took out his pocket and just threw it in there. I was like, wow. And it was just, it was a powerful moment. So I'm glad that you got to know that or got to see that. And now he knows me. He knows how to get in touch with me. It's unbelievable. Very cool. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Oh, Stan, wow. I want to hear your flow state. What do you do to get into flow? Well, you know what, I, I, it was amazing that when you asked that question, I, I hadn't really ever thought about that question specifically for me, but it's when I'm writing a, it's when I'm writing a poem that, I, that, that really is coming to me. Yeah, when it, it, it's when I'm really in, not when I got to sit down and think about one, but when one is just kind of coming to me and I'm flowing and then I write one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish I get that, I wish it, I got it more when I perform it, but I get it when I, more when, I, when it's being created, when it's being delivered to me, yeah. How beautiful, I had no idea. What a beautiful community this is, that you write poetry and you perform it? Well, you know, when I get a chance to, I perform it on our platform and here and there, if I get an opportunity to, yeah, I do. Uh-huh, oh. yeah. Oh, wow, well, will you perform one on here one morning? Yeah, uh -huh. I think I did it one 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 poem one time before. It was been a long time ago, but yeah, I wouldn't mind definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, I I missed that. I know we're running a little bit up on time. I wonder if anybody has any questions about the science of flow or how to have more of it in your lives. Sorrel has a hand up. Good morning, everyone. I do have a question, Tara and Catherine. Thank you for this. Thank you for the gift of your daughter. And uh, I'm thinking about uh, the many things I love and enjoy, like music that transports me, like the sound of birds chirping that just mesmerize me, right? And I'm wondering, is there a difference between those moments in life and doing an activity that transports me? Is there a difference between the flow and that? Yes. There is a difference. They're both super valuable and really good for your mental state. As you know, there's no there's no um, denying that. But to sit and absorb the sound of birds or music and just let it flow through you is it is a meditative state. So you're going you're going into a different brainwave if you really really let your body absorb it. It's not challenging to listen to the birds, right? It's soothing. Those are different receptors in your brain. So that's, that's more of a soothing. And like this morning, I heard a song when I was getting off the Peloton by the Beach Boys, Good Vibrations, and it elevated me even more. That's still not flow state because I, 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 it, it's not challenging me. 
And so that challenge piece is when you've got some dopamine and norepinephrine in there. And what you're talking about does not, um, it's not, that's not part of it. Still, still super healthy. Does that help? Yeah, that helps. And, uh, and, and it actually also helped me uh, see one of my flow things. One of my flow things is doing workouts that I don't know what I'm going to do next. Like the routines are random. Mm -hmm. And then it just tells me what to do. And I go, oh my God, can I do that? And then when I get there and I do that and I stick with it and, uh, and it gets better and better. So I'm challenged yet. I know I can do it. And I'm like, can I do it? And then I do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So in, in that, in those moments, so you've got en endorphins helping you out too. So that's, I mean, that is, uh -huh. that can be almost euphoric and yeah. just, want to for people to hear what you said and encourage people to go after that in life it is not selfish to go out and do whatever it is that puts you in your very best place yeah. um it's 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 actually loving to all those around us so carmen has her hand up muy buenos dia good morning good morning wow i want to congratulate all of you for that beautiful program I am still crying for your daughter. Oh my God, because I am, I am a ch the chicken mother with my children and it touched my heart a lot. Uh, congratulations because she is moving on. And um, wow, I, it's, it's, it's good to see that we can have situation and get out and get stronger and be inspiration for others also. <laughs> like I said to my, my little son, you can be inspiration for others when you pass for any situation in your life. And um, thank Rachira for inviting me to, to this uh, beautiful uh, program. I wanna say hello to Chase, the long time we met and I was doing other things about we here together again. Have a nice day, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carmen. I want to speak to what you said just a moment because you said congratulations. And here's one thing I've learned, and I think we all know this innately, is um, my sweet daughter, Holly, right now is climbing out of a dark place. But you know what? More dark times are headed her way and yours and mine and yours. And with each one of those dark times, we learn better how to cope and how to manage it. And so next time a tough time hits her in the face, she'll even have another tool. And for her, it's creating pottery. So I, I thank you for saying that. There is no congratulations to me. She, you know, I worked on myself kind of the easy way, running. I mean, first I was smoking, then I was running. I was just working. I was just like the epitome of dopamine chaser. She's done the, the hard stuff to get to know herself, do a lot of therapy. I mean, a lot of work. Um, so the congratulations goes to her and I'll pass that word along. <laughs> Anything else we got before we close it out, Catherine? I think that's it. It's just a beautiful way to hear how other people spend their time and, to, you know, to sense into that. I just, I love being a part of it. Thank you all. Yeah. yeah. I just, uh, before I close this out with our seven tenets, I do just want to remind us that, it's never too late. We're never too old. We're never too tired to discover something new. And the discovering of something new that lights up those pleasure receptors could be the absolute perfect answer to taking you to be the very next level of the best version of yourselves. So let's all unite together and go out and find that flow state. And let's do it with love. Let's remember that we're not only doing it to love ourselves, but to love others. And let's remember to take care of ourselves. That means to eat those beautiful color rainbow foods, those plants, get more sleep, stress less. And don't forget to not take yourself too seriously. Throw your head back, laugh out loud, let those endorphins fly and give. Give of your time, your talents, share yourself vulnerable. That's a form of giving. And then certainly don't forget to move that body. We will see y'all next time on the Daily Huddle. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Have a One love day. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, beautiful day. Thank you.
as required.